Vicki met what she thought was the man of her dreams. He is Jerry Odom, a man Vicki Edge met online and fell in love with. Now he's charged with her murder. In talking to the detectives of this case, they said it was one of the most um, brutal types of murders that they've seen in a while. Edge had been dating Odom for just a few months, and the relationship was moving fast. But she, too, shared with me about he had a big surprise, and uh, she was thinking he you know, probably got her a real nice ring. According to the police report, on August 6th, Odom told Edge he had a surprise for her. She thinking that this was the surprise he'd been telling her about, and then he brutally murdered her with a baseball bat. The police report says Odom had bought a bat a week before and that Odom had given Edge a $15,000 check for the wedding they'd been planning. He had told her that he had owned a bunch of properties and he had sold all these properties. He took her house shopping uh, because they would use some of that money to go to buy a house with. And they actually went out and looking at houses and... Then he gave her a magazine and asked her to pick out uh, the car that she wanted, that he was going to buy her that for a wedding present. But Odom didn't have the money to cover the check. When he knew that she was going to find out, instead of walking away, instead of saying, you know, I lied and walk away, letting her just get angry and, and go away, he murdered her instead. Police discovered Vicki's body at Odom's home in Milton, Florida, Friday night, August 7th, 2020. Uh, a family member was looking for her. They called us and they had an idea where she was. Odom was charged with first degree premeditated murder and remains in custody pending trial. He has pleaded not guilty. A woman who dated Odom just before Vicki did says he was a wolf in sheep's clothing. He was a pathological liar and a manipulator. If I, if I had met her before, I definitely would have told her to run as fast as she can. But he gave her everything he gave me, and that was the dream of uh, a future. Odom's ex-girlfriend believes what happened to Vicki could have happened to her. As, as someone who just stayed with him and kissed him and held him and never looked in his eyes and never really saw or felt like he would hurt me. But after hearing what happened to Vicki Edge, I dodged a bullet, literally dodged a bullet in my life. I don't know how it happened. I can only say that I would, I had the wherewithal to move on, but it's very traumatizing. And Vicki's family also remains distraught by the tragedy. I mean, it's one thing to die, but to die in the manner that she went through, it's just, I mean, he's a monster. He, there's no other word I can use to describe him, and in my personal opinion, hell's not hot enough for him. A GoFundMe page has been set up to raise money for the family's funeral expenses. Her friends and family say she was active with a number of charities and was about as close to an angel on earth as anyone could be. She was always helping those less fortunate, even if she, you know, was struggling herself, she would always find a way to help out others. In incredibly tragic when you think about it, you know, she thinks she's met the man of her dreams, you know, we're house shopping, getting ready for a wedding, and then that happens. Um, we're going to get more insight into this alleged killer from his ex-girlfriend. Let's take a listen. I met Jerry on a dating site. His name is Jerry Odom. And uh, he and I chatted back and forth briefly and he asked me if I would meet him at a hibachi sushi restaurant. So I drove to the restaurant and met him at the, the he was there at the bar waiting for me. It was raining that evening. And um, tall, distinguished looking fellow, dressed very well. Um, nice glasses, haircut, prompt, you know, nice, nice, ma nicely manicured uh, hair and nails and whatever. And anyway, so we sat at the, the the hibachi table with six other people, and you know, we we had dinner, and he seemed very 
funny and interacting with the other people uh, at the table and uh, asked me, you know, walked me to my car and asked me if I'd like to go out with him again. So I did. He said, I drive a, an older truck, but I'm actually a millionaire. Uh, I've invested in real estate over the years and uh, I've done very well. As someone who just stayed with him and kissed him and held him and never looked in his eyes and never really saw or felt like he would hurt me. And afterwards, I, after this situation with Vicky, I sincerely felt as if I dodged a bullet, literally dodged a bullet in my life. When I read the report, that was in the newspaper and when it was in the media, uh, I fell to my knees. I was crying. I was hurt, confused. Uh, my first thoughts were, is he capable of coming after me? Even though he was in, arrested, I had no idea if he did come looking for me. I was paranoid. Uh, I really felt as if God spared me. It's very traumatizing, very traumatic to know he killed someone. And that was a man that I had trust in and had in my apartment and had meet my children and my granddaughter. And all those things have been a roller coaster of emotions for me. Jerry is a pathological liar. Everything he said, he will look you in the eye. He will tell you this is what happened. This is how it happened. How long it took. Da, da, da. Do not believe it. He's a pathological liar. I'm sure within those two days, he came up with the story of how he did it, when he did it, how he felt. And I did tell the investigators, he's a pathological liar. And they said they knew that. One night, this is an interesting thing. I had been, I wanted to watch this movie that was out. It was called Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So he came over and like I said, he's very agitated, very hyper, having his drinks. And he watched the movie with me, which is, it's a spin on the Manson murders. And he knew everything verbatim that was going to happen and would tell me this is the way it really happened. And almost like obsessed by the book. And he said, I read that book. I know this story. And so I thought that was kind of peculiar, but I didn't really enjoy the movie because he talked through the, the whole movie. He would buy me flowers when he came to pick me up. And he usually would say to me, you know, I have a surprise for you. And I said, oh, no, oh, flowers, how nice. One day he came over and he said, I have a surprise for you. And close your eyes. And of course, uh, I did that. And I believe that's what he did with Vicky. But this time he handed me a jewelry box. And so I opened it and it was a diamond ring. I was very uh, cautious in my relationship with him. I'd seen the red flags of the drinking. I'd seen the red flags of the lying. At some point, I think there was an altercation. And I think he had an arrest record, but his brother, who was a family attorney, had it expunged for him. So uh, I'm not sure what the charges were. This is what I believed uh, until I realized he lied. And then I couldn't believe anything. And at that point, I, I wasn't even, he would say his wife was a liar. His wife was the one that was lying, that she wanted him back. So he's very good at the manipulation and uh, making me think, well, maybe she's jealous or, you know, maybe she's lying. Uh, but anyways, I fell for a lot of things, but I was not going to get involved with someone who was a, a drinker on a daily basis. I definitely went off all the dating sites in fear that somebody would still find me. It's, it will, it will haunt me for the rest of my life that it could have been me. But when I say that I have a, a real guilt for the person that it was, I am not an advocate anymore for for online dating. I never will be. Absolutely frightening. And, and she's right. She said, I dodged a bullet.
I mean, imagine, you know, you dated this man and now he's charged with murdering someone else that he met online like he met you. Uh, wow. All right.